Welcome to Sims Store. This building is a replica of a general store that really existed on the Erie Canal. It now is a museum that houses artifacts and photos that portray life during the canal era. Today we'll be looking at some of the tools that were used to dig the original Clinton's Ditch. How would you get to the museum today? You would probably ride in a car or bus on a smooth paved highway. If you lived in the United States in 1815, there weren't any cars or buses. People walked, rode horses, or traveled in a wagon or carriage pulled by horses. The roads weren't paved. They were bumpy, rutted dirt roads, so travel was slow. It might have taken you an entire day to get from your house to Sims store. When our country first gained its independence from Great Britain, the leaders realized that we needed efficient transportation for people and goods. Using water transportation was smoother and faster than over land. More goods can be carried on a boat than on a wagon. The idea of digging a canal west was born. Soon, the people who were hoping to dig a canal realized that there was a huge problem. The east coast of the United States had many mountains, which would make it an undesirable location for a canal. However, the state of New York seemed to be the perfect place for a canal. Even though mountains lay in the north and in the south, there was an area of low land between Albany and future Buffalo that would be an ideal place to dig. Governor DeWitt Clinton was confident that the canal could be successfully dug in his state even though Americans had little experience digging canals. The project was estimated to cost $7 million. Many Americans thought the idea was so crazy that it became known as Clinton's Folly or Clinton's Ditch. With DeWitt Clinton's encouragement, a 363 mile long ditch four feet deep and 40 feet wide would be dug in the ground connecting the Hudson River with Lake Erie. Even though the available tools were crude and Americans had no experience digging canals, work began in Rome, New York on July 4, 1817. In the 1800s, there weren't any gasoline or steam-powered excavators, chainsaws, or bulldozers, so the canal was completed using man and animal power. Axes, pickaxes, and shovels were the tools that were available to the canal workers. Contractors hired local farmers to create the canal. Digging with shovels and pickaxes was a slow, difficult job. It became obvious that new, more efficient tools were needed if the canal was to be completed on time. Some workers began to create labor-saving devices. The phrase, necessity is the mother of invention, proved to be true. Much of the land of the canal route was thickly forested, so many trees had to be cleared before digging could begin. The axemen were hired to cut down the trees using axes or a two-man saw. They were paid 50 cents to one dollar a day. It took a man one day to dig out two to four tree stumps using shovels and pickaxes. A labor-saving device called a stump puller was invented by a canal worker. This device could pull out 20 to 40 tree stumps a day. This machine had wheels that were 16 feet in diameter. They were connected to an axle. A chain was tied around the tree stump and attached to the axle. The animals that were hitched to the device walked forward, turning the axle that wound up the chain, ultimately pulling the stump out of the ground. When workers began digging the four foot deep canal, it was very difficult to lift shovelfuls of dirt and rocks into the high sided carts that hauled away the materials. A worker modified the design of the cart, making it into a wheelbarrow by rounding the bottom of the cart and sloping the sides. Now it was easier to load and unload the wheelbarrow's contents. The slip scraper was another labor-saving device that was invented by a canal worker. It is similar to today's bulldozer, only it was powered by animals rather than by an engine. The original Erie Canal was successfully completed in eight years. Now there was a water route 363 miles across New York State. Clinton's Ditch reduced travel time across New York State from 26 days to 6 days, lowered the cost of carrying goods from $100 a ton to $10 a ton. The canal made New York City a bustling harbor and helped immigrants to settle the western states. To celebrate, a flotilla of boats carrying important New Yorkers traveled the entire canal from Buffalo to Albany and then was towed to New York City by a steamboat. There, a ceremony called the Wedding of the Waters was held where water from Lake Erie was poured into the Atlantic Ocean. This route would make it possible for boats to sail across the Atlantic Ocean into New York Harbor, up the Hudson River, then travel on the canal all the way across New York State and even further west. The Erie Canal was truly an American success story. 
This video was made possible by generous grants from Solve Bank. Solve Bank, make more possible. CNY Arts and News Channel 9. Thank you to News Channel 9 meteorologists Kate Thornton and John D. Pasquale for generously donating their time as narrators for the video. And a special thanks to the many volunteers and friends of the Liz and Dave Beebe Camillus Erie Canal Park who shared their expertise, time, ideas, photos, and artifacts to make this video to share with students from around the world. To find kid-tested activities about the Erie Canal, go to eriecanalcamillus.com and click on the School Tours button.